welcome to DC Today. Uh, Brian Seitel with you here today. I'm in the uh, our New York office studio, and it's been a great week here in the city. Um, did a CNBC hit on Monday night, which was fun and exhilarating and and uh, and really good. And uh, have some market news for you today to go through. I am recording this a couple, um, a little bit earlier than I normally would. Um, so the market hasn't fully closed yet, but I've got plenty to go through with you anyways. And if the numbers shift slightly in the next hour or so, so be it. Um, but we had big rally yesterday, obviously, with CPI coming in far lower than expected and markets rallied big. The uh, advanced decline ratio yesterday was 14 to 1. And so that's that's um, that's as big as we've seen in, in, in about a year. So that's good. Um, the bond market rallied really hard yesterday as well. Rates came in a lot. So today we had PPI, which is the producer price index. So what wholesale goods inflation is versus the consumer side come in far lower than expected as well. So you had CPI lower yesterday. Now you have PPI the next day far lower. Um, and it was something like it came in at uh, a negative 0.5% which is basically the biggest decline since we've had since the peak of the pandemic. So this is a big decline in, in, in inflation in the last two days. It was expected to be positive 0.1, so negative 0.5 versus positive 0.1 as expected. Um, and, and so stocks sort of followed suit. The market was up, at least when I typed this, 170 points. It had been floating around 120 or so most of the day. The futures were up about a 120 as well. Um, so I, I frankly thought we may give some of that back. Um, as interest rates moved higher a little on the day, which is a little counterintuitive. If you had lower inflation numbers two days in a row, um, why rates would, would move a little higher today. The 10 year was up like 10 basis points today. Um, and I think part of it is just that yesterday was not necessarily super overdone, but it was just a, such a massive rally in the bond market that I think we just gave a little bit back. There was a um, an auction in, in the UK yesterday on 20 year gilts, which is their treasury version that uh, they issued 7 billion pounds of, of, uh, of government bonds and they had $93 billion worth of interest. So it's 13 times bid to cover ratio, which is huge. It means that the world, the markets are looking at bonds as fixed income instruments, thinking that rates are going to go nowhere but lower. And I'd say they probably will go lower, but it won't be a straight line. But the point is that the amount of money now that is trying to get into the bond market is pretty massive. Um, I know our own high yield bond uh, manager was up over 5% last couple of weeks. So the bond market rally has been pretty big. Um, the um, core numbers, so the, the decline in PPI, a lot of it was energy. And we were um, initially worried about energy keeping CPI or PPI high, you know, that energy prices would keep inflation high or sticky because of Middle East, because of Ukraine, uh, you know, all these different things. And that hasn't been the case. Oil has gone from 100 to 75. So the headline number on PPI was lower because ener energy came out. But even if you stripped that out and you just looked at core, it was still lower than expected. We got um, uh, uh, basically unchanged and we were expecting a positive two. Um, so again, uh, if you're in the camp of lower inflation means the Fed's done and may start cutting rates as, as most of us are, then I think these numbers are good. Um, Retail, and then here's the mixed bag. Retail sales today were better than expected. So there goes your U.S. consumer not giving up. They're going to spend until the end. That uh, rhymes. Um, but the uh, retail sales were up, uh, or, I'm sorry, down 0.1%. We were expecting a negative um, 0.3. So better than expected. And as I said here in type in New York, um, we had the Empire Fed Index, Manufacturing Index, come in far better than expected. Um, so we, it was a 9.1%. Uh, for the month versus negative 3% expected and negative 4.6% for the month uh, prior. So more things going on in New York on the manufacturing side. It's busy here. It doesn't shock me. Um, big news the, on geopolitical. Um, uh, Xi Jinping, president of China, is in San Francisco in a, in a CEO summit, and he's meeting with President Biden and has a big agenda uh, planned. Um, they're talking about things that range from uh, you know, improving relations as far as Biden and Xi Jinping, improving relations, um, you know, communicating with militaries. We, we haven't been doing that for a while. There's some AI discussion and implementation on some military things and applications that they're, they've agreed to not use. Um, everything from trade to fentanyl and, and the, you know, issues of it coming out of, of China and the U.S. and all these sorts of things. But I think any communication, and I wrote this, is going to be deemed as good. I don't know exactly what will come of it. Um, 
a lot of times we have communication and then nothing really seems to happen after it. But the market tends to feel better just the fact that there's two people meeting in person on U.S. soil. And I suspect that'll put a little bit of a, a tailwind in markets. And I think that's part of what you're seeing um, a little follow through on the day. Um, the House of Representatives did pass a stop gap, gap bill to keep the government open. Um, it, it goes to the Senate now, and uh, that'll need to get voted through before midnight on Saturday. Otherwise, we're going to have the fourth government shut down in 10 years if they don't. Um, so I'm optimistic that they actually will. Um, it's in the Democratic Senate at this point. Um, all that to say, I, you know, the market action today was positive. Um, um, you know, the rally yesterday, everything participated, small caps, which had been lagging historically, have, have started to catch up and really participate. Pretty much everything was positive except for uh, oil and copper. So I guess that makes some sense. You have inflation, which is commodity sensitive, moving lower, and some of the risk assets that are, that are interest rate sensitive, moving higher. But all that to say, um, another good day in the markets. Um, I won't attribute it to my CNBC hit in my time in New York, but you never know. And um, I'm off here leaving this office, and I'll be back with you uh, probably after Thanksgiving. So for all of those I don't speak with, I wish you all a happy Thanksgiving with your families, and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you for listening. Mm -hmm.